The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report for Tuesday the 18th of October. Uh, Very special episode today. I'm Charles Firth and with me is Dom Knight. Hello. And our producer Lachlan Hodson. Hello there. How are we doing gents? Now Lachlan, you've got a bit of a scoop I do, I do believe that uh, for the first time in Chaser Report history, we're about to report uh, something, something (laughs) exclusive. And in actual fact, this this isn't another attempt to do producer notes, is it? Because if it is, this is a terrible (laughs) wind up. I'm quite excited, so it's better not just be producer notes. Mm. No, no, it's absolutely not producer notes. Okay, so just uh, for listeners who, who don't know who you are, Lachlan. Yes. You are still studying at university, aren't you? I, I am. No, yes. I. Uh, it's this very elaborate cover the, mm. that I've worked on for stunts yes. where I've gotten myself into tens of thousands of dollars of student debt yes. just so <laughs> that I can I can keep up this front of front being of a university being student. Being a university student. Yes. And you've, you're, you study, amazingly, podcasting at university, don't you? I, I yeah. do indeed, and, <laughs> yes. And pray tell, how are your marks going in oh, that course? Uh, somehow I, I managed to score HDs in just about everything. <laughs> so you're, what you're saying is if you want to get HDs at university, mm. all you have to do is become a producer in the top 30 podcast of uh, and do a podcasting degree. And, uh, and you get, and get nominated for Australian Podcast of the Year yeah, Comedy Award right. 2021. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Hang on a second. Um, we should enroll at university, Charles. We yeah. do much better than we ever did before. <laughs> What's the scoop? So I, I had to do this assessment. and I was doing it with a, a university friend of mine, John O'Wakely, mm. uh, where we just had to interview uh, someone, anyone really, uh, on any topic of our choice. Mm. Uh, and we figured we'd get some pretty decent marks if we interviewed a public figure. Yes. Uh, and we're both interested in politics. Mm. Uh, uh, again, I thought that I could use some chaser connections to make things a bit easier. Yes. Um, uh, not easier. No, no, no. I, I wanted to work really hard <laughs> yeah, on my yeah. assessment, if you're listening, Helen, um, yep. my lecturer. <laughs> Uh, no, we, we thought, yeah, it'd be cool to, to do an expose on what goes on inside the mind of a politician. Mm. Uh, and we thought that Bob Catter, he, he's known for, yes. for clips like this. People are entitled to their sexual proclivities. Let there be a thousand blossoms bloom as far as I'm concerned. You know, but I ain't spending any time on it because in the meantime, every three months, a person is torn to pieces by a crocodile in North Queensland. So what goes on inside the mind of a politician? We thought, what goes on inside the mind of Bob Catter? Let's find out. That is the most important question in the whole of Australia (laughs) right now that we could address, I reckon. Yes. So I managed to book an interview with him uh, under the guise of being a university student, not for the chaser, not Mm. for for work. Um, It was in my off hours on a Saturday. Mm. uh, and I Good, because we would have docked your pay. (laughs) (laughs) And he has time. We're not representing people of Kennedy on a Saturday to talk to you. Yes. And I thought he might just talk to us for, for 15 minutes. It'd be mm. a nice casual conversation. John and I got off the phone to Bob Catter one and a half hours later. Oh, and we no. probably got in each mm. about three sentences. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard he's a bit of a, a long talker. Yes, yes. Well, actually, I went it, to my lecturer after we did the interview uh, mm. and she just kind of went, yeah, no, uh, Bob Cat is kind of known as a do not interview figure, <laughs> and I, I thought it'd be funny to let you guys learn the hard way. <laughs> but that surely isn't the scoop. The, no. that Bob Talker is known to chat. Yes. Like, so well, this is what we called f- him Bob Talker, which is a Freudian slip that says it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, um, I think Bob Chatter is probably <laughs> the better one. Yeah, yeah. He, could um, talk for, he could talk for Australia. Talk coherently, though, it might be more of a challenge. But <laughs> <certainly> that would, <laughs> that would be a scoop. Words. Yeah. So impressive. we were talking to Bob. It was very. Very hard to get direct answers from him. But mm. John and I realised we could use this to our advantage. We could probably just let him trail down whatever mm. detour conversationally that he wanted to go down. And if we just got a quick interjection in, we might find gold. Mm. So while we were on the phone to him, Bob Catter made a mm. potentially self-incriminating statement. Do you want to hear it? Yes. All right. Ever since I was a little kid, at eight years of age, I um, refused to stand up for God save the king or queen or whatever it was then. And for the rest of my life, I never have. You've got a sign when you go to state parliament, federal parliament, that we pledge our allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. 
I mean, do you seriously think I'm going to sign that document? <laughs> and, and did uh, you? I, I say don't, and I write no on it. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> I'm getting so old now, I, I could probably reveal that. You know? Wow. Did I just hear Bob Catter say that he doesn't pledge allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen, or indeed the King as it is now, mm. when he takes office in Parliament? That reminds me of another Yes. Media story this year. What? what am I thinking of? Oh, are you by chance, Dom, thinking of this? I, Sovereign Lydia Thorpe, do solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that I will be faithful and I bear true allegiance to the colonising Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Senator Thorpe. She's not a senator if you don't do a I'm she actually did it, didn't quiet. she? Did she actually pled, uh, pledged allegiance hmm. to the colonising question? She actually was more allegeful, <laughs> allegeful, <laughs> allegeful than than hmm. Bob Catter, who just hmm. refuses to sign at all. That's hmm. really interesting because not only because um, clearly there needs to be a little bit of double standard from, from what you're saying, but also. Hmm. It sounds as though Lydia Thorpe is a sovereign citizen, and that's a very weird political stance for a Green to take. <laughs> now, anyway. so, so hang on. I'm in a little bit of two minds here, which is we've got a proper scoop on our hands yes. here, which is, which is Bob Catter has allegedly a, yeah, according is to not, himself, yeah. uh, is not legitimately in, in parliament, parliament yeah, and has not legitimately been in parliament yeah. for not just the 29 yes. years he's stood as the member of Kennedy, mm. but for the 22 years where he was just a state politician as well. And indeed, probably in the school council when he was age <laughs> eight. But I am, I'm in two minds because I kind of agree with him. Like, yes. good on him mm. for mm. R- refusing to pledge allegiance to the fucking queen. <laughs> The Chaser Report. News a few days after it happens. So what we did, uh, just to sort of cut the story um, yep. to the chase, which is... Hey, no, you can't do that when you're talking about Bob Catter. We need to yeah. go on a very long diversion <laughs> oh about uh, yeah. building standards in North Queensland. Yeah. <laughs> but we... So Lachlan did this interview last week mm. and... Lachlan, you seemed quite animated about it. You, you were very amazed that you'd got this scoop. I, I, I know, yeah. And I was sort of co- poured a bit of cold water on it because I thought, well, you're not going to... Like, you're just a uni student. You're not going to sort of get a proper scoop no. or something like that. So on Friday, we emailed a lawyer, mm. uh, actually Michael Bradley, who's the lawyer at Mark Lawyers. Uh, mm. You probably follow him on Twitter if you're on Twitter. And asked him whether he thought there was anything in this quote, and this is what he said. What does it mean if Bobcat is telling the truth in that clip? Well, yes, he's telling the truth. So what he's done is each time he's um, been re-elected to Parliament, he's stood up and made the oath of allegiance to the Queen and then signed the oath that written no, apparently, on the question of whether he was swearing allegiance. Um, so it sort of contradicted itself. But the Constitution requires all members of Parliament to make the oath both orally and in writing. They have to sign it. And it says that until they've done that, they cannot sit or vote in Parliament. If he's telling the truth, he's at no point been eligible to sit or vote in Parliament. Wow. And, and what does that do for all the legislation that's been passed by a single vote that mm. he's been party to? Does that unwind that legislation or is, is that just in the past? I mean, look, as entertaining as that would be, um, <laughs> <laughs> probably not. It is arguably analogous to the situation where a an MP gets declared ineligible under Section 44, for example, if they're a foreign citizen, which has been very popular in recent times. And often that means that someone who's been sitting in Parliament for, you know, for quite a long time, it turns out, was never eligible to be a member of Parliament in the first place. But the, the High Court ruled way back in 1907 that that didn't invalidate any of their votes. Mm. in Parliament. Um, they didn't really have a good reason for that other than that it would have been terribly um, impractical yes. to deal with it any other way. I expect if after the court would say the same thing about this situation. And so what's the what's the consequence mm. for Bob Catter? Does he just have to you know, put the piece of paper in front of him and yeah. say, well, come on, you've got to sign it? Or does he have to pay back all mm. you know, his wages for the last few decades? <laughs> no, well, again... Um, Constitution actually provided for a fine 
for members who had been determined to be ineligible, um, not that that's ever been enforced, but it doesn't say anything about this particular failing. Um, it was just assumed that everyone would actually do it and presumably someone would actually read what they'd sign, make sure they hadn't drawn a penis on it or whatever. <laughs> um, but um, clearly no one has been. Or Bob Catter is making shit up, which is probably the most likely. Um, scenario, um, but no, he, he yes, he could just fix it up going forward, and they presumably would make him. Um, and but otherwise, yeah, he he'll get off for free. Right. Well, and so that was my question: was is there any way to confirm that what he's actually said is true? Because I I don't know how to get my my hands on the pieces of paper that he's allegedly written no on. Might be susceptible to an FOI claim, I would, I would guess. Okay. Um, but yeah, presumably there's a file in the basement protected by a person who hasn't seen daylight for many decades. <laughs> so is FOI, because I thought FOI only related to sort of ministerial things, not uh, parliamentary documents. Well, it was pursued in the parliamentary letters case. I mean, government is, um, is answerable to FOI. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's an interesting question because, yeah, I mean, Parliament is not mm. part of the executive, it's the legislature. Yeah, um, and because I know, like, the Morrison government used to, Morrison's own political staffers used to be under his whip's um, name because so he, their emails wouldn't be FOIable. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that he started this new <laughs> regime to sort of yeah. <laughs> reduce transparency. Did. Yeah, he also declared himself a cabinet committee of one. <laughs> that he could claim cabinet secrecy over everything he ever did or said. Wow. Um, although, as it turned out, he was he was actually a cabinet of five. <laughs> <laughs> you think we have a legitimate scoop here? Yeah. Yeah, to the extent that you can place any credence on anything Bob Catter says. Yeah, <laughs> yes, oh, but. damn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for your time, Michael. Mm, later. So there you go. We've got a legitimate scoop on our hand Woo. as long as Bob Catter can be relied upon <laughs> on his word. I mean, I'm not known for my probing legal analysis or indeed my journalistic scoop, <laughs> but I, I must say I was a little worried when the entire premise rested on something that Bob <laughs> Catter said. <laughs> oh. But oh. it's certainly worth a question, isn't it? I, I, I yeah. feel like of, of the three of us right now, I am currently the Bob Cutter expert because I had to talk to the guy for two whole hours on a Saturday. Yeah, and you're oh, also yeah. the most legitimate journalist in this conversation. <laughs> um, and, and the fascinating thing about him was, so we were interviewing him yeah. on the premise of, are politicians really down to earth or, or are they in touch with their voters? Mm. And, you know, Bob Cutter has been in politics yeah. for 50 something years and he keeps getting elected in the, the seat of kennedy so clearly he's got to be doing something right mm. right mm. Uh, and it was really fascinating to sort of actually talk with this person who i've seen sound bites of i've made jokes about i've made headlines about mm. uh, and just realized that not only was he not in touch with you know e everyday sort of issues uh, and politics his head was not on touch with his shoulders <laughs> we asked him at one point oh bob could you tell us Please, just in one sentence, why do you want to be a politician? Mm. And he goes, oh, oh, well, when the Romans were trying to capture Jesus, launched it into yeah. a five-minute monologue. It was absolutely uh, but isn't unfathomable. That, isn't that – I'm going to have to disagree with you there. Isn't that mm. the perfect politician? The, <laughs> the politician who is so good at stonewalling, so good at not answering the question mm, mm. that – you just give up after a while, after and two it hours. Seems, <laughs> it seems like an eccentric tick, but it's yes. actually a brilliant strategy. Yes. He's probably the savviest operator in the whole of Capitol Hill. Yes. <laughs> but also, Lachlan, I've got to disagree with you because, yes, okay, he didn't want to play a ball with your inner city issues, with the kind of things <laughs> that you're concerned about. But he's the only person talking about the threat of crocodiles in North Queensland. <laughs> yes. Clearly the first thing in the mind of the Kennedy voters when they head to the polls and re-elect him once again. <laughs> well, this is the fascinating thing. you know. Do I think that Bob Catter will follow through and meet Section 42 of the Constitution by signing the document that he has to sign if he mm. wants to be a minister? Or but do I think to that... To be a member. Oh, sorry, yeah, to be a member. Or do I think that Bob Catter will do a much more likely Bob Catter move, which is go... Buggy is, I'm not signing this thing and resign out of uh, pure disdain for the monarchy. Yeah, and you will have brought down 
a, a staunch Republican. <laughs> what a what a great <laughs> legacy you've got, Lachlan. Well, as far as the university <laughs> assessments go, I think taking down a longest standing member of parliament <laughs> should earn me some pretty good marks. I think you should get an HD. Unless the lecturer has to listen to you one and a half hour long, <laughs> <laughs> in which case it's a fail. This also raises another question for me. We now have in the Albanese government mm. an assistant minister for the Republic mm. who's sworn allegiance to King Charles or probably Ooh, the Queen. When would yes. be the Queen. Mm. Is he a traitor to his oath? Let's get Matt. Th- let's Matt Thistlewait. Yeah. Let's get him on the podcast, and we'll put to him that paradox. Yeah, because he is. That's that's treason. He should be arrested and he probably won't be able to have him on the podcast next week. He'll be locked up alongside yes. Bob Catter. But the other thing that comes to mind is what happened in all the other cases of Section Forty Four. People like Barnaby Joyce, mm. they had to have a fresh election. Yes. So no. it is entirely possible. I know Michael Bradley said yeah. that he could just sign it and fix it. Yeah. But that may not be ultimately the case. He may yes. be found not to have been properly sworn in. Yes. And there might be a by-election, in which case I think Lachlan's getting sent up to Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your punishment oh, is you have to you. cover <laughs> the Kennedy by-election. Well, I, I think, in fact, he should run. Oh, run. In Kennedy. Well, because yes. clearly they needed an MP who actually knows how to swear allegiance and be validly elected. It's a yeah. low bar. And one that I think, Lachlan, you could uh, probably cross. Haven't I been through enough, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, Lachlan. Uh, well done on the scoop. I assume this will be all over the press tomorrow. Oh, we're sure hoping, yeah. yeah. And, and I, oh, Bob Catter's people are calling me right now. No, Bob, I haven't got an hour and a half. Oh, <laughs> um, classic. Right, thank you, Lachlan. You did an amazing job, and I'm genuinely embarrassed that someone's done some genuine journalism <laughs> on this podcast. Our group is from Obi, we're part of the ACAST Creator Network. Catch you tomorrow. But I ain't spending any time on it.